Tell me if it's too loud. Nice. Well, greetings, everyone. Hello. Welcome. I love the idea of holding hands because it's uh, it's so meaningful of the marriage bond. Of the idea of two separate people in this moment as you hold each other's hands, you guys are you're one, essentially. You're still two people, but you're united um, as one person. And I think, for me, that's one of the most uh, beautiful things of marriage is that picture of unity and that picture of, of two separate lives, two people that grew up in different backgrounds, different places, um, different personalities, different perspectives. Um, you're becoming one. You're joining hands and, and lives. And it reminds me of, of Genesis 2 where marriage is actually um, <coughs> the only place that I know of in history where it, it tells us the origin of marriage. And the story begins in Genesis 2, verse 18. And God saw Adam, and he said, It is not good that man should be alone. Do you agree? I do. You do? I do. <laughs> I agree, too. And God agreed. He said, It's not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. And out of the ground, God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought these to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So here's a scenario of Adam, you're alone and you're by yourself and you're looking around for a companion because you see all the animals and they all have companions. The cats, the dogs, the lions, the tigers, they all have someone to hang out with, but you're alone. And so... God has Adam name these animals as they, as they pass by, and as they're passing by, he's looking at him thinking, they all have someone, but I don't. And so he was alone. And so Adam gave names to all of them, and God caused, uh, uh, so gave names to all the cattle, the birds of the air, the beasts of the field. Uh, but for Adam, there was no one found a helper comparable to him. And God created a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and as he slept, he took one of his ribs, and he closed it up, the flesh in its place. Then the rib which God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. If we were to interpret that today, it would be something to the effect of, Wow. This is awesome. <laughs> and as you look at Elizabeth and you see the beauty that drew her to you and the, her person and who she is, you see her now and you see the gift that she is of God and you say, wow. And that's really what Adam, Adam said. But God, uh, so Adam said this, he said, this is now, uh, so therefore, God said, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. And so there's that, in the origin of marriage, there's a, just that beautiful scenario of you two people becoming one and uniting in thought. You're uniting in action. You're uniting in motive. You're uniting in concern, and in love, and fear, and friendship, and duty, and purpose. All those ways two people are now one. And you are becoming so one in this moment that to separate you would cause irreparable harm. And so in this process of you becoming two people, now becoming one, it's kind of like if you melt something together. Once it's together, if you try to pull it apart, it actually destroys both. And so that's a beautiful thing about what you're doing. You're exchanging loneliness for companionship. You're exchanging confusion for now you have counsel. You're exchanging despair for support wandering for direction and solitude for family. And so in joining hands together, you join your hands, your heart, your mind, your body, your soul, so that you both can pioneer together through the road that lies before you. And it is a bond that is both strong and tender. It's strong in that this bond that you're creating tonight is allows you to now have the strength of a multitude 
Not only are you two people coming together, but you have the strength of many. But it is tender in that every harsh word that either of you speak, every harsh action, can create a crack in this oneness, in this bond that can eventually cause ruin. And because you are becoming one, how you treat one another here on out is actually how you treat yourself. And that's kind of what God was alluding to when he says that, that you love her as yourself. And that the sense that you take care of yourself, you cherish yourself, you provide for yourself. Now that you're one, you take care of each other as one. But at the same time, when you bring harm to each other and speak harsh words and, and, uh, and treat each other in the way that sometimes we do in marriage, you're actually hurting yourself because of that oneness. So I'm going to ask you, Cario, first of all, uh, these words, and if you agree, you can respond, I do, and then I'll ask you the same, Elizabeth, and then uh, we'll have you uh, read your own vows. Do you, Macario, take this woman, whose hand you now hold, to be your lawful and wedded wife? Do you promise to love and cherish her in sickness and in health, and provide for her in prosperity and adversity, to be faithful to her, and forsaking all others, cleaving unto her, and to her alone, until death do you part? I do. Awesome. And Elizabeth, do you take this man, whose hand you now hold, to be your lawful and wedded husband, and pledge to do by him the part of the faithful wife? Do you promise to love and honor him in sickness and in health and in prosperity and adversity, and forsaking all others, cleaving unto him alone until death do you part? I do. Awesome. You guys have the rings? It's from somewhere. It's from Since you're doing the vows together, why don't you put them both on each other at the same time? So they're going to read their uh, vows that have been a part of. Elizabeth's family for uh, several generations, so this is really cool. <coughs> Where you look, there will I also see. What you know, there will I also be aware. Where you plant, there will I also sow. Where you pluck up, there will I also uproot. What you cleanse, that will I also sanctify. What you hate, this also will I despise. Where you labor, there will I also toil. Where you rest, there will I also be at ease. Where you battle, there will I also make war. Where you contend, there will I also contest. When you make peace, there will I also cease. When you laugh, I will rejoice in you smile. I shall be fulfilled. Mm. <clears throat> because the Lord does see and is also watching, because eternity is forever and time is racing onward, because the light must triumph over the darkness, because you are more than worthy and this pleases our Father, because God has planned and purposed this for our lives, because I need you and will be the best I can for you. Therefore, Therefore never, never urge me to leave <laughs> <you> <laughs> or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me severely, if anything but death separates you and me. Wow, that's awesome. Let me pray for you guys. Father, I thank you so much for these two young people, and just, just an incredible gift um, that you have given each of them and each other, and, and so thankful. Father, for these vows and for the words that are spoken and just the, the love that goes into it and the hearts that they have. And uh, Father, I just pray that those words that they spoke would be uh, just emblazoned in their mind and that they would become something that they dwell on and think about and, and in the good times and, and in the hard times, Father, that they'll remember um, this, uh, this bond and that you would just really um, be with them, Father, and protect them from the many things that could come and, and bring harm. And I just thank you for them. And thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I say you can kiss the bride. Wee, 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 wee. Yay. Yay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, yeah, I missed it. You missed it? Yeah. <laughs> I now present, present to you husband and wife. Awesome. Oh, wait, I have that. You didn't ask. <laughs> There's a reason, right? Congratulations, guys. Awesome. Congratulations. Welcome to the family. Que su matrimonio dure toda la vida, mi Que Dios me los bendiga. Que Dios les bendiga su familia. Congratulations. Que Diosito me los cuide, Dios me los bendiga. Que Dios les bendiga su hogar y los llene de bendiciones y los llene de amor. Que siempre Dios esté con ustedes. ¿okay? Luego le dice lo que le dice. Que su hogar esté siempre de bendiciones, lleno de amor y de bendiciones. Okay, la queremos mucho y bienvenida. Oh, I have a good thing. You will, huh? I have a good thing. You. Boy, you will. Que Diosito siempre va a estar con ustedes. Siempre me lo prometes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Gracias, gracias. 